This is Christian Buckley with the Microsoft Buzz Chat interview. I'm here with John. Hello. Good morning. Hi, morning. Why don't you introduce yourself for people that don't know you? Sure. Uh, so my name is John Maunder. Um, I'm originally from the UK, but I moved over to um, work for Microsoft in Redmond. I'm a senior pro product marketing manager. I work in the Microsoft 365 and security group. And I work on the marketing side of that with our go-to-market channels. No, no, you've been in the community for, for many years, so I, I, I knew you have been connected to you with several years. So what were you doing previous to, to Microsoft? Sure. So I've been with Microsoft about five years. Uh, previous to that, I worked for a large-scale uh, GSI uh, called Cyber, and they were based in the UK for me. Uh, there I was an infrastructure architect doing Office 365 migrations, uh, Lotus Notes directory onto Exchange, uh, Exchange Online, Azure Active Directory. And then before that, uh, I was an independent consultant for six years. So very community focused. I did user group speaking, uh, user group engagements, uh, worked very heavily with the MVPs in the UK and beyond. So I like to feel like that's, what, that's where my roots are, uh, despite now working in Redmond for Microsoft. Well, you know, it's, it, I think Microsoft has, that may, and maybe, I'm sure it, to some degree it's always been true, but Microsoft in the last few years really seems to be uh, honing in on hiring those community hires and, and bringing a lot of great people that know the, uh, that aren't just drinking and selling, reselling Kool-Aid, but understand what customers and partners are going through. I, it's, it's great to see that. Uh, certainly within the you know, SharePoint and Office 365, the Teams space, uh, you know, having people that are well-known personal brands moving over to Microsoft has really benefited Microsoft. And I think, I think that's been a core aspect of, of what has changed how Microsoft has been creating content and getting, improving their listening skills with the community. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's, uh, it's because of the perspective. It's a unique perspective. You know, we've, we've been in the trenches with, with customers. We know the pain points. Um, and to be able to bring that up to kind of corporate level uh, and expose that out and be able to change the conversation with those fresh perspectives, make sure that kind of um, there's this kind of saying in Redmond, so getting, out of, getting out of the 98052, and that's the zip code of Redmond. And, being able to bring a, kind of a global perspective, uh, a customer perspective and a customer lens to uh, what they're doing is, is highly valuable, both for um, you know, an MVP, a partner, and a, a Microsoft full-time perspective. It's, uh, they're, they're highly sought after. Well, it's uh, it, and, and something that I wanted to talk to you about specifically. Um, so you had shared uh, in, so we have our, as part of the MVP community, we have these uh, monthly calls and we have various presentations so different product groups and both from the marketing and sometimes from engineering they come in and share some things uh, sometimes that are you know, under very strict NDAs it's not yet available out there which is another great thing is that you know Microsoft has been, been doing a much better job at sharing with the insiders kind of hey here's what we it's not yet ready for prime time Here's what we're thinking. Get that final feedback so that Microsoft can then alter messaging and positioning of something. It, it's affected whether features go live or not. Um, and so that, that kind of feedback. But you had shared something around uh, something that's public, that's out there, that's generally available. Uh, and I just really wanted to share that with uh, this, uh, this audience we get to know. But maybe you could talk about the transform.microsoft.com, what, what's being done there. Sure. So uh, historically, we've had multiple locations for, for resources, for both Microsoft full-time employees, uh, partners, and MVPs. <clears throat> so they've been uh, demos.microsoft.com, and that's a place where people can pick up the latest demos. They can grab demo tenants. Uh, they can add on products, depending on what they're trying to do. And they can also get demo scripts directly from the product groups and the product marketing groups. So they can go out to the community, they can go out to the field, they go out to customers, and showcase the value of products and features. Can I just add, add on, just tack on to that? Because this has actually come up 
and I've uh, you know let a couple MVPs know that say, hey, we spend this time, we go and we create this, we have this free demo, we have this resource that's out there, and it's what you know up to ninety days or or what have you. But uh, we add all these other products, we we build these scenarios, and then after ninety days, it's 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 done. It's like no, you can actually if if you want to continue using that, you can then start paying for that you know that demo environment, but move that over. But that's this is just an important. Uh, uh, thing that people need to understand that it's not just gone. You can go and build based your your examples, your demos around the out of the box demos that Microsoft provides. You can add a lot of value, value but then keep that environment. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that that's definitely one path. Uh, we've also extended to the MVP community um, and to partners a one year tenant as well. So you, we we understand that these are heavily invested in, especially when it comes to anyone who's doing on-premises hybrid configurations. Then we know a lot of effort goes into those customizations. So we're trying to make sure we can extend that to a to a usable period. Now, part of the reason for there's a couple of reasons for 90 days. Number one is having freshness of content. You know, we're delivering services uh, and new product into those all the time. As soon as you take a tenant from that uh, that site and this service then it, it's a public site. It, 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 um, we have the same uh, release cadence as, as the public sites do. But when you come to us and get a fresh one, we would have injected brand new content in. And that's all happening when we do something called provisioning. Um, so once you've taken that talent, it's ultimately it's in the state it will be forever. By, by coming back to the service, you can get all the latest content, latest services pre-built again for you. So it's now, important to kind of balance that out. For that, for that demo, can you make your demo environment be on a faster or slower ring? Uh, or, or is it just by automatically, does it, is it on that fast ring? It's not automatically on the fast ring, but you can go into the, the admin portal and switch on first release. Again, it, it's a standard production tenant. Um, we've just injected the latest kind of demo content into it. Um, and that's the great thing about coming back and getting a fresh tenant. Uh, is that we have that fresh stuff in there for you? Because yeah, that that's something that is uh, you know again we get like the weekly and sometimes more frequently like the the uh, you know, Office three sixty five updates and as changes come across and and you get excited so you even see uh, Microsoft present something and you always have to look and see it's like available in the fall like dang it like I want that now. Um, so, so certainly to be able to set that demo environment and have it at the front of the line uh, so that you can start playing with that capability is, is critical. Yeah, and some, uh, some transparency here is we're working with the exec demo team uh, very closely to ensure that when a demo gets pushed out of our Inspire keynote or a, an Ignite keynote, for example, uh, that we can onboard that demo set as quickly as possible into the, into the environment. Ultimately, this is our scale engine to help people and enable people to, to showcase the latest things. So we, we do know that there's this kind of lag between the keynote and getting something in the environment. Of course, it's not always possible to have that live code, uh, but you know, we are working with that team to see what we can do to make it scale more quickly. It's, it's, you know, having worked for a number of ISVs, it's a frustrating thing for clients, uh, especially for the people out in the field too, from the, from the product company, uh, to go out and talk about something that's not yet ready. Is it slideware? Is it completely demo? Um, and, and so it's, it's great to have that stuff. I know, look, I, I'm a marketing guy, so I understand you want to get people excited. And sometimes the product release cycle doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't keep up with the uh, conference schedule and when you need to have the, these big moments. But uh, yeah, and, uh, but it's, it, it's wise to have that, that environment out there, that demo environment, and just continually go out there. And that should be the first place you hear about something, know that it's now generally available to go to that environment to, uh, to see it and to play with it. Absolutely. So as, as part of the transform site, we've moved uh, the demos.microsoft.com into transform.microsoft.com. So making sure that we can unify and have a single destination for people to go for a whole range of uh, kind of experiences and, and product content. Well, why, why don't you talk about the, the site and uh, transform.microsoft.com because what, what stood out to me, and, and I'm going to handle it in a different uh, you know, blog post and stuff around it, but having attended so Microsoft's partner conference uh, this last month, July, uh, it was uh, you know, Microsoft Inspire in Las Vegas. I went to a couple of the sales and marketing sessions where they showcased a number of different 
tools. And so when you were demoing some of the transform site, uh, it, it said, well, hey, is this the same of what I saw? I was like, no, these are different destinations and there's some slight nuances there. So I'll, I'll have to go and do some comparisons between those. But a lot of the, the benefit and the comments from the MVP, the, the vast majority of them had no idea that this was out there. So it was great to see, it was very positive uh, response. But the ability to go in and find and, you know, content uh, and, and have it configured to your needs was really powerful. But why don't you give an overview of what uh, the intent is of the site? Yeah, sure. So uh, as I say, so we've, we've consolidated a number of tools into a single location. So transform.microsoft.com <clears throat> now houses a content, customer content builder, assembler. Uh, what that allows people to do is um, answer a few questions on a form, uh, the role or, or customer account, the industry, the areas of interest, and uh, based upon the answers, we'll go through our platform and we'll pick out relevant slides and content for you and piece that together for you for a single downloadable asset. So these could be fact sheets, uh, customer proposals, pitch decks. Um, it could be product focused. It could be value conversation focused. Um, but ultimately, you go to one place and we will scour our platform and present back to you that single presentation with all of the topics that you're looking for. Um, and it really saves a lot of time because historically you've had to search around, uh, potentially scrape the sites like the Inspire site for those sessions. I myself in the community have spent many, uh, many hours watching uh, Ignite presentations and hoping I can download them and customize them for my own presentations back to customers. Uh, but we're really trying to simplify that process using this uh, customer uh, content assembler. So that's what that's the first tool that we have available. In it's, it's one of the most common questions that I'm asked as an MVP is like, how do you keep up on all these things? And to be able to go in and have this aggregator around these things to be able to go to one place and see, you know, all of that, you know, it, you know, internal and external content or the, I guess, internal Microsoft kind of content that's, that's valuable there. And this is, I think, an important, you know, place to, uh, to add to bookmark that you go and look for this content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the second tool that we have is around ROI, return on investment. And we have value calculators that, again, you, you fill in the forms, you go through a set of questions, and it'll help you understand, help the customer to understand the real value proposition uh, from, from a financial perspective, hard benefits and soft benefits of moving to Microsoft 365. So we look at things like cost consolidation and cost takeout from third-party applications and moving all of those in, across to Microsoft 365. And it allows the customer to really deep dive. So we have a number of levels of, well, hey, is this the first engagement? Do we need an overview of the financial benefits based upon the licensing types? We can go through that. But there is deep level uh, cost quantification and you, you can download an Excel spreadsheet and really go deep with the customer, whether it's procurement or finance or IT, uh, and really get under the skin of the value propositions um, uh, for my moving to Microsoft 365. And, and you're able to do that by role and by industry and some other, uh, you know, uh, demographic, you know, information of that, that, that customer as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the great thing is, is that it's not just available for MVPs and partners. Um, we've also put that on the Microsoft 365 uh, website. So customers can actually now go directly to that and start working with that value calculator. So if you want to kind of prep your customer for that, send them to the public site. Um, and they can start interacting with those numbers themselves. But I, I'm just, uh, sorry, I'm sitting here clicking on stuff. I need to uh, actually go through some of this. I hadn't really gone through that section yet, but yeah, it's very cool. All right, so then there's the third section. Yeah, the third section is, is um, as, as, the, uh, as the person that uh, executed this specific project, then uh, this is close to my heart. Um, so I've moved... Uh, demos.microsoft.com, demo assets and tenants. And we also had something called the Business Value Program. Uh, the Business Value Program was about uh, value-oriented and business outcome-driven conversations. Um, and the great thing is we've mainstreamed those into Microsoft 365 marketing. So no longer are we having product pillars. We now have uh, value conversations geared around business outcomes that are relevant to the customer. And that's in our core marketing material um, for, for people to leverage. And by doing that, we've, uh, we've actually retired the full business value program because we had a, a whole range of tools and a process end to end. And because we've mainstreamed it, we don't need that program anymore. It's just part of the DNA of how we go to market. Uh, so we've reused the URL for, for BVP. It was the transformed at microsoft.com. 
Um, and within the business value program, we had something called the customer immersion experience. And this is uh, much more than a demo. It's a day in the life. Uh, up to 20 participants from a customer can get hands on with Microsoft 365 geared around those business outcomes. So rather than thinking, oh, hey, I need a Teams demo, it's I need to connect securely and remotely to my, uh, to my um, content uh, and collaborate. And, you know, customers, it resonates with customers when you say, hey, this is something we're trying to achieve rather than this is what the product does. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a so people understand too. I mean, it's a big difference. Of course, it's been a it's a, been a complaint uh, about uh, you know for for years as long as I've been in the Microsoft ecosystem since 2005 formally um, that you know so much of the content, so much of the, the the ROI statements are made are based on a product when what a customer is trying to achieve might be across I refer to them as workloads. You know, might be across five or six workloads. Uh, and, and so you, you, I don't care so much about a SharePoint or a Microsoft Teams standalone, R, standalone ROI. I'm looking at for my frontline workers, what is the ROI, which might be several different products or workloads um, for my product managers, for my marketing team, for my sales team. And so looking at it from that perspective. So where, so I'm now assuming that this, you know, the customer immersion experience I've got a second statement on that in a minute, but we'll, again, look at that, the role within that industry, that perspective, yep. and then the workloads. It, it may highlight like Microsoft Teams, which is, you know, one of the, the core, you know, solutions, the, the, the interface into the Microsoft experience and how that's being marketed today. But again, that's just one piece in the overall view. It is. And um, we're really anchoring on storytelling here. So making sure that we move away from a product demo into stories that resonate with customers. And, and the great thing about these sessions, and the, these are uh, the CIE is actually the number one sales tool for the, for the, for the UX. And it, um, customers have these wow moments. They're, they're, they're going through these scenarios and they're like, hey, I didn't know it could do this. This is going to save me hours of time. You know, Look at how I used to do it and look at how I can do it. I had no idea this existed. At every session, you see multiple participants saying, wow, I didn't know this stuff existed. So it's actually great, not just from a sales perspective, but from an adoption and deployment and um, you know, success perspective. People understanding the tools that they own and have at their fingertips. Um, so the customer immersion experience is something we've wrapped up. And we've also brought that into the customer digital experiences platform. Um, and what we're, what we're doing here is that um, historically, again, the stories were different. The services inside of those uh, platforms are also different. And we're bringing that into a single, um, a single location, but also a single storyline. So any of the product demos uh, that you see will be sitting on top of the same services that's running the CIE. So as a business or an IT user goes through these stories that resonate and the value that resonates, when they want a deeper dive, they'll see the same uh, demo personas and the same products that are alive. And they can say, hey, it's that thing in Teams that my business users love, but I really need to deep dive on how this gets configured. Can you show me how? And that single tenant is how we're connecting our customers through the journey of, of our own products. And it's really important for us to anchor on storytelling. So that's another one of the benefits of bringing everything into one place is that we have a single backend platform, a single services and single content that we can just write different levels of stories on depending on our audience. So that's one of our key attributes. Um, I, I, I know there's a box there for connected experiences, but I, it, it's, this is something that for those that have done a lot of uh, presenting, especially from a, a, a sales experience or where you're working, you're sitting in front of a very large client and you're trying to show them different aspects of this to align the demos for your segment of what you're representing with your team members around that. It, it, was, it was very painful. Mm -hmm. um, one of my past companies, Acceler, I mean, we had a, a very robust uh, demo environment that for a while there, um, you, there was a demo laptop that you'd have to carry with it because it was all, you, you couldn't rely on you know, yeah. internet connectivity going and doing a demo somewhere uh, and that we would kind of pass that around. But because it was a shared environment, we were able to do that with all of the demo data. But it was so robust and people would look at it and say, wow, could 
is there any way we could license your demo system just so that we have all that robust fake data that we could play with and ex you know, experience these other things? And we said, well, no, it's kind of a, you know, a competitive intelligence type thing. But the, the, the value there was exactly this, was being able to, I can talk about knowledge management capabilities, the you know, collaboration, hand off and let somebody talk about uh, workflow and frontline workers and show a completely different demo on the same set of data and even tied back to, and here's what you know, Christian just showed you, I'm gonna show you this next piece of this. Uh, that could be very powerful in that storytelling. Absolutely, and we're trying to level it out as well. So, you know, customer immersion experiences are generally level 50 to 100, that's the business audience. And then the demos can go level 100 down through to level yeah. 300, that's a very, very technical audience. Then the third aspect that we're bringing online here is actually labs. So today we have multiple kind of public facing websites for labs. Um, <clears throat> by unifying a lab platform, again, the same pl back end platform for Microsoft 365, same back end platform for CAEs, for demos, but also now for labs, meaning that you can go to level 400 IT Pro how to on the same platform, the same set of technologies. So when your IT department or leaders are sitting in the same room as the business leaders, who are, who are having these wow moments and they task their IT pros to go and check this out. Um, you can, you'll know that from an N365 perspective, we're building labs that are using the same services on the back end and they'll see how to configure to achieve that business outcome using those other platforms. From, a, from an internal perspective, as an MVP or partner on Microsoft FTE, it's also great to have a, their learning. So labs can be used for internal readiness, um, so, so there's click steps and talk tracks that take them through the how-tos of the platform. Again, understanding that it's the same platform that runs demos and CIEs. But having that all in one location under the customer digital experiences, is just a hugely powerful place um, and tool set for people to kind of level. And not having to update and not having to keep up, keep track of what's in the demo system. It always has the latest, greatest version of it. Mm -hmm. I, in some ways, you know, partners and MVPs, like we've just outsourced that effort to Microsoft. Yep. It's good to be able to do that once in a while. <laughs> yes, it is. And um, you know, this is, this is the beginning we've launched. It's not the end, it's not the end product. We have investment for the entire of the financial year. Uh, we have a huge backlog and some exciting changes coming along, um, including an events portal. So we're looking to make sure that uh, when people need to access resources at scale uh, with the appropriate you know, business justification, because of course these things are expensive, but, um, having that ability to come and come to Microsoft and request resources yep. um, and allow to say, hey, I've got a, a community event or a partner event. I need 50, you know, it's got 50 attendees, they're customers, uh, and I need these resources at this specific time from you um, with these stories. You can come and request that from us. So that's in the backlog. It's not here yet. Uh, but but so that's something that is, it, I would say that, so, so I'm having organized uh, uh, more than a dozen different locations for SharePoint Saturdays and, and other community events and part of the user group here locally and it was there in the Seattle area, we've leveraged those, those resources uh, in the past. So exactly as you point out, we went and made a, a, a business justification for it. One time it was, so in fact, last, this year's, so this year, last year, our SharePoint Saturday event for uh, Utah, uh, where we had the Microsoft store up in Salt Lake City, actually came down and provided a bunch of the hardware and then did some of the emergent experience, walked people through, should let them play with stuff. Um, but in past events, it wasn't that refined, but we, you know, like running the event SharePoint Saturday there on Microsoft campus, I did that for eight years. And we had a number of times uh, immersion experience folks at the European SharePoint conference um, uh, the, this last November. And, and again, this year, they have a huge section that is hands-on lab immersion experience where they're going through this, the same activity. People really respond to that. It, just as you point out, it's, it's not just, Hey, check out these four or five features for this new product. It's let's sit down that we'll talk about, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? Let's walk you through these scenarios and so they can see the entire life cycle. It's pretty powerful. It is. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this at Ignite as well. So in Orlando, we're also going to be having these CIEs. We have pop-up booths and pop-up rooms. 
um, <clears throat> and uh, customers can can come in and and we'll have facilitated sessions. So if it's something that people are interested in and experiencing themselves or sending their customers to, we'll be at Ignite uh, in Orlando this year with probably four to six rooms uh, with those running. So I did, so so two years ago, I was a community reporter for at, at Ignite. Mm -hmm. And one of the segments that I did was on the, uh, the you know, on that area with the immersion experience and the labs and all that. And uh, just an observation for those that are thinking about attending uh, uh, the, the conferences, just be aware that it was that whole space was largely empty at the front of the week and was pretty packed by the end of the week. I said, if you want to go and experience that, I'd say try and get there earlier rather than later because as, I mean, look, it, it's, it, it, it's natural that as you're hearing the keynotes, you're going to sessions, you're finding out about stuff, you want to go and put your hands on something directly, go learn more about it directly. But, um, you know, just, just something to, to add to your list if you're looking for something to do on day one or day two uh, and not have long lines, that would be a great place to go. Awesome. Well, listen, so aside from going to the site to transform.microsoft.com and, and just digging in and, and exploring what is out there and available, uh, any other resources, other things that you want, want to alert people to go take a look at? Uh, well, it's like I say, it's the Transform site and also the Microsoft 365 site as well. So um, you can go to Microsoft 365, I, I believe it's Microsoft365.com. Um, I would need to check that, so maybe I can follow up with you afterwards. Um, uh, so, so my colleagues have been working on, like I say, putting the value calculator in a, in a public, publicly consumable place. So that's now, you know, we're really trying to open source these tools to make sure our, uh, our customers can get their hands on and it's not locked down behind some gate. So we're always working to drive, to drive people to the public sites from a, from a customer perspective. But as a partner or an MVP, you know, please have it, head over to Transform and, and check it out. And look, like I say, we're at the beginning of this journey. It's not the end product. We have investment to continue. If there's things that you'd like to see, I'm very open to taking feedback and uh, we're always looking to improve and deliver new things. So yeah, what's the best way to do that? John, like, are you active out on the Microsoft tech community? Should it be through user voice? Yeah, that's the, the great questions. Um, I am on tech community. That's number one. Uh, I'm on Twitter. So John underscore Maunder. Um, you can find me on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm on the social channels, LinkedIn as well. So uh, perhaps I can um, do some tweets out and uh, yeah, we can, we can get my contact details shared. Awesome. Well, John, really appreciate your time today. And thanks for, uh, for, for sharing this information. I'm, I'm excited to see as this expands and I'll definitely be out there uh, talking about it and sharing it out as well through my social circles. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. <laughs> Wow! <laughs>